on yesterday's episode of SCTV. Looking for his uh, address. Yeah, well, nobody knows Caballero's address. Besides, you couldn't see him today if you wanted to. His daughter Connie's getting married, and none of us at the station was invited. All right, is there any other business on this the day of my daughter's wedding? Yeah, 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 this Turk. This Turk Ugazzo from Pay TV is trying to make some kind of deal. Happy Spagnolo, odio fra poco, on the sun with Nostro, the Spagnolo. But this conductor, his letter Bernstein, he don't like me. He's saying the party's no good for me, I'll never get the part. I'm going to talk to Tom Hagen, my consigliere. Mm -hmm. I'll send him to New York. He'll talk to this Leonard Bernstein fella. Well, this Bernstein, he's a tough guy. He won't listen to anybody, you know. Mm. Yes, he will. I'm going to make him an offer that I think will be to his liking. Senor Pasquino, say hello to Mr. Hagen. Well, I said say hello. I swear to you, Tom, he's got the most beautiful speaking voice you ever heard. My client would like you to give Johnny Pavarotti the lead in that new war opera you're starting. Johnny Pavarotti does not get that part. <laughs> Senor Fuschino! You better give Johnny Pavarotti that part. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mr. Turk Ugazzo for setting up this uh, fine meeting between the heads of the five networks. Well, I guarantee you that within a year, we can drive out HBO and the rest of these small bum businesses will control the free TV and the pay TV. Well, gentlemen, I'll be quite honest with you. Before I saw that demo reel, I was gonna go along with this whole thing, but now my answer's a flat no. Caballero, you think this is a personal insult? I never thought it would come to this. Network war. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Catherine O'Hara and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. of uh, Mad Magazine and perhaps the latest issue of uh, Cracked. And let's see, how about a swank or a gent? That'd be nice. You have Argosy, that'd be...
Oh, Achilles, uh, could I have my magazines, please? Oh. Oh, for shame. All my money is shredded. I don't feel so good. I... New York. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Sitting in for Dan Rather this evening is Morton Dean. Good evening. Guy Caballero, owner and president of SCTV, is listed as being in stable condition after the apparent gangland attempt upon his life today. Officials are gearing up for the thing they fear most, a total network war. Of course, this kind of thing has to happen every five or ten years. It gets rid of the bad blood. This is Jessica Savage for NBC News. Good night. And now, here with a commentary on today's events is Earl Cannonbear. Thanks, Floyd. The recent wave of network violence that felled SCTV president Guy Caballero is, in this reporter's opinion, deplorable. <laughs> Therefore, tonight I would like to extend my own olive branch of peace to my fellow broadcasters on the other networks in the fervent hope that. What the hell's going on here? Sonny got mad and hit PBS. Just hit PBS! What do you want to hit him again for? I hate that egghead network! Hmm. Besides, you knock off the brains, the rest of the jerks will follow. This is business, Sonny, not personal business! Uh, Tom, this is no time to be reading the classifieds. It's not the classifieds! It's a personal call! Uh, hello, boys! Well, word out in the street is that the old man is dead. <laughs> Son of a... Oh, we're just kidding. Cut the crap. What do you want? Well, the reason I came in here is that our license is up for renewal. Guys, to take the broadcasting oath today. What? What are you telling me? That my pop, who's lying half dead in the hospital room, has to take a broadcasting oath? Yeah. Forget it. Look, Sonny, if he doesn't take the oath, we lose the station. What are you telling me? <laughs> you son of a... Pop takes the broadcasting oath. What? You heard me. Pop takes the broadcasting oath. And while he's doing it, we settle all of the network business. We hit everybody. Tom, it's good to see you. Tom Caballero. Ricky, I'm glad you're taking over the family business while I'm temporarily indisposed. You're acting like a real man. Thanks, Papa. But I'm sure you'll be back to work in a few weeks. A few weeks? I'll be out here in a few days. It's gonna take a lot more than 600 bullets to slow me down. I feel just fine. <laughs> Looks like I need a plumber. <laughs> Connie, I didn't notice you there. How are you, my dear? How's that? Hot-headed husband of yours been treating you. Oh, he treats me like a princess, Don Daddy. Good, good. How do you feel? Oh, I feel like a million bucks. Just had my hair done. That's fine. Fine. What is it, Tom? Time for the oath. You're out, Tom. Pop, it's time to take the oath. Oh, yes, the television code. Pop, these commissioners are from the FCC. They're here to help administer the oath. First from New Jersey, Don Fanucci. How are you doing? Don Fenucci, come on, start to me, Maria. Bene, bene, grazie. And Pop from the Bronx, Commissioner Don Ciccio. Very Ciccio. Good to meet you. You ready, Don Caballero? Yes, I am. Take a reading from this paper. Thank you, Don Fenucci. I, as a television broadcaster, do solemnly agree that it is in the interest of television as a vital medium to encourage programs that are innovative 
reflect a high degree of creative skill, deal with significant moral and social issues, and present challenging concepts and other subject matter that relate to the world in which the viewer lives. Good morning and welcome to Today. I'm Jane Pauley. In our top story, things seem to be calming down at the networks with the remarkable recovery of Guy Caballero. We'll have more on that later. And Jane, later on in the show, I'll have a candid conversation with Ed Asner about his bitter defeat to junior samples for the California State Senate seat. I also do solemnly agree that in selecting program subjects and themes, great care must be exercised to be sure that the treatment and presentation are made in good faith. Janet. Have you seen my underwear? <laughs> what, do I look like a lawyer? A lawyer? I don't have your briefs. <laughs> and not for the purpose of sensationalism, or to shock or exploit the audience, or appeal to prurient interests or morbid curiosity. All right, Jimmy the Greek, New Orleans, Baltimore. Who do you pick? Well, I don't like either one of those two teams, Brent, so I didn't bother to pick anybody. <laughs> well, I understand that Phyllis is given the edge to New Orleans. Phyllis? Phyllis? Why don't you just shut up about that Dave Musburger? I'm gonna plant you right in the kisser. Okay, what about Atlanta Green Bay? I also agree that television is seen and heard in nearly every home. These homes include children and adults of all ages, embrace all races and all varieties of philosophic and religious conviction, and reach those of every educational background. Television broadcasters must take this pluralistic audience into account in programming their stations. All this and a lot more as the Today Show continues right after this. Hey! What is wrong with you? You've been dipping into the Uzo again? Well, I've been dipping a bit, but not as much. What business is it of yours, Muskrat? Come on, you want to fight? Let's go. Yeah, okay, Greek. Come, come on, on hey, hey, come on, let's okay. go. Me and you. Greek, it's a hit. Ah! to bring their positive responsibility for professionalism and reasoned judgment to bear upon all those involved in the development, production, and selection of programs. Gentlemen, how could it have come to this? We must never again take up arms against each other. Now, I'd like to thank my two sons who filled in for me so capably while I was uh, temporarily indisposed. <laughs> temporarily indisposed. <laughs> seriously, though, gentlemen, seriously. What I'm proposing is a truce, a just and lasting peace. Salud. 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 Now, gentlemen, if there's no further business, arrivederci. 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 Ciao. Ah. Ciao. Arrivederci. Mike, about the gabagool and the things. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Arrivederci. Pop, why were you so quick to call a truce? Yeah, Pop, that don't make any sense. You gonna let those network punks get off the hook like that? Yeah, be quiet, both of you. Turk, come on out of there. <laughs> now, uh, Turk, what do you say we go 50-50 on this pay TV thing and squeeze those network jerks right out of the picture? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, One on the Town takes an exciting behind-the-scenes look at one such musician, Levon Helm. I'm gonna take two weeks, I'm gonna have a fine vacation. And I'll try and find out just what makes this man tick. 
I just can't talk with you right now. Excuse me. That and much, much more as one on the town meets Levon Helm. But on your thinking caps, it's time for television's favorite game of academic achievement, the special nighttime edition of High Q. It's Night School High Q. And tonight, students are taking night courses at St. Michael's Collegiate. Oogie Sharp, Peter Arik, and here with his wife, Lana, to interpret for him, Chris. They'll be matching wits with night school students from Central Polytechnical Institute. Mike Roach, John McInnes, and a former contestant on Daytime High Q, Margaret Meehan. And now, here's your host and monitor for Night School High Q, Alex Trebek. Thank you, thank you very much, and welcome to Night School High Q. As you know, all our contestants on Night School High Q are trying to further their education by taking night courses at high schools all over the city. And we here at Night School High Q are trying to help them along by giving them a chance to exercise that newfound education and at the same time win some big cash prizes. So if we're all set to begin, I'll wish all our contestants good luck. For 25 points, our first topic is... Margaret Meehan, Central. Do we decimal system? No, Margaret, uh, I'm afraid that answer is incorrect. <clears throat> but of course, you didn't let me finish the question. The topic is motor mechanics. Now, for 25 points, what is... Margaret Meehan, Central. Backseat driving? Uh, Margaret, no, that answer too is incorrect, and I'm afraid I'll have to ask you not to press the buzzer until I finish asking the question. Margaret, you should be very familiar with the rules here on Haikyuu by now. We have to hear the question before we can answer it. For 25 points, what is an intake manifold? Oogie Sharp, St. Michael's. Oogie Sharp, St. Michael's. Yes, Alex, thank you. It is a thing that my grandchildren would use with their, with their records. The gramophone? Manifold, manifold. Right. Like Roach Central. What? You buzzed? No. <laughs> my mistake, I'm sorry. Did okay. somebody accidentally press their buzzer there? Must be a technical problem. Peter Rick, St. Michael's. Yeah, Alex, I'm pretty handy with the electrics. I can go up to the second tier, take a look at Mike Roach's buzzer, and Bob's your uncle will be done in five Peter, minutes. Peter, thank you. We do have people who are quite qualified to handle that uh, kind of thing, but thank you anyway. No skin off my nose if you change your mind, Alex. Intake manifold. Case Von Bayek, St. Michael's. Need an answer, Case. <laughs> Quickly now. Intake manifold. I can't understand you, Case. With the cylinders? I'm sorry, we can't. Do we have any uh, Dutch judges here? Can we accept an answer in Dutch? I'm sorry, we need an English translation. Mrs. Van Veyck, please. What did your husband say? What was his answer? A translation. Time is up on that. I'm sorry, we can't spend much more time. An intake manifold is... John McGinnis, Central. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, and I might be, but I don't think I am. You're talking about a manifold there, and that's uh, John, thing... does the phrase, time is up, mean anything to you? I just said time was up. I was about to give the answer here. An intake manifold, a multi-vented pipe that carries the air-fuel mixture from the carburetor to the cylinders. Well, you see, that's what I was gonna say, you see. Mike Roach, Central. What? Mike, you just pressed your buzzer this time. No, I didn't, really. I didn't. Ask him. I didn't. Is anybody pressing their buzzer up there that uh, shouldn't be? Peter Rick, St. Michael's. Yeah, Alex, I got a uh, Phillips right in the car. One, two, three, I'd be back. I can help you out with no this buzzer. No points, no points on that one. We really do have to move along to our next topic, which is Margaret Meehan, Central. Computers? No, it is not computers, Margaret. Uh, I don't know why you're pressing that buzzer before I finish asking the I question. Thought, I thought it would be computers. It is not computers! Now, please, don't press the buzzer until I finish asking the question. That's my job. I ask the questions, you give the answers. Okay. Our next topic is music. Margaret Meehan, Central. ABBA? No, it is not ABBA, Margaret. It is not uh, ABBA. Now, please keep your sticky fingers off the buzzer until I finish asking the question. And you hear the piece of music. This is a two-part question. Name the following piece of music and the composer. Heard they crowded the floor. 
couldn't bear it without you Don't get around much anymore Fall John McGinnis, Central! Well, I might be wrong, Alex, and you can correct me if I am, and then uh, I'll eat a bug, but uh, I think I, I used to dance. Anyone else? Pace Bombay at St. Michael's. Quickly now. We need an answer. Don't get around much anymore. That is correct for 25 points. Case for 50, can you name the composer? Oogie Sharp, St. Michael's. Yes, Alex, the answer is don't get around much anymore. <laughs> the answer is don't get around much anymore. We all know that, Oogie. Case just gave you the answer. Do you know the name of the composer? Yes, I do, and you don't have to shout at me. Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington is correct. A correct answer there. That gives St. Michael's a 50-point lead. And we move on to our third topic, which... Margaret Meehan, Central. No, go ahead. Our third topic, which is word definitions. For 20 points each, define the following English words. Margaret Meehan, Central. A small vice-like object. No, it is not a small vice-like object, and there you go again, wasting more of our time with another one of your stupid guesses. No points on that one. Disconnect her buzzer. Anyone, lugubrious. Peter Rick. Alex, I can disconnect her buzzer for you. Peter, why don't you disconnect your own buzzer? Fine. Two down, one to go. Anyone, lugubrious. John McGinnis, Central. Well, now, Alex, tie me down and jump on my head if I'm wrong on this. And uh, I'm, uh, I might be, but... John, uh... do you have an answer for this question? No. Disconnect his buzzer. That's two down, one to go. Come on, anyone else? Let's go. Come on. Mike Roach, Central. What? Roach, you pressed that buzzer. No, I didn't. I saw your hand go down on that buzzer. You are hearing things. Not I didn't... anymore, Roach. I did not. Disconnect his buzzer. What? You can't That's do it. that. Central yeah. disqualified. St. Michael's 50 points out front. They're the winners. That's the game. Good night, everybody. That's the next show. Right. What? What? I can't hear. What? I see that. It's not working. Take this and strangle yourself. I saw that thing going, Roach. You want to come down here? Come on down here. Come on down here. Come on. 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 Come on.